Hey everyone, it's Alan back again with another video, and today I wanted to talk about a mutual fund I came across not too long ago called the Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund, ticker symbol CLM, that really stood out to me for a couple of reasons. As an income investor myself, this fund meets a lot of the criteria that I look for in a stock or an ETF or in a mutual fund that would make me seriously consider adding it to my portfolio. Right off the bat, as you can see, it's yielding an impressive 14.94% in dividends and has a really low reported expense ratio of just 1.13%. And on top of that, this mutual fund pays dividends monthly and is very well diversified among different sectors, including technology, healthcare, real estate, utilities, etc. With so many good things going for it, I knew that it would be worth taking a deeper look which is what I'm going to do today and try to determine if this fund is worth the risk of holding a little bit of shares or maybe even a whole lot of shares in your portfolio. Before I dive into things, if you're passionate about income investing and want to see more content revolving around high dividend investments, please consider clicking the subscribe button below to see all of the newest content on my channel. It's basically what Dividend Bull revolves around, which is being able to live off of dividends without needing a multi-million dollar portfolio or waiting until you're older than the hills to do so. Thank you all so much for your consideration, and with that being said, let's get into it. So according to their website, the Cornerstone Strategic Value Fund is a closed-end equity mutual fund that invests in public equity markets across the globe in companies operating across diversified sectors. The fund primarily invests in value and growth stocks of companies and also invests through other closed-end investment companies and ETFs, as well as preferred stocks, rights, and warrants. The fund was launched back in 1987 and is traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol CLM. So one thing you need to keep in mind right away here is that this fund is not an ETF, it's a mutual fund. But it's not like your typical mutual fund that you would have in, say, your Fidelity or your Vanguard 401k. This is what's known as a closed-end mutual fund, or a CEF. Closed-end mutual funds are less popular than open-end mutual funds, and there are some really important differences between the two. Here's a quick table that I made that basically compares the three types of investments. Closed-end mutual funds have an initial public offering, much like a stock, and then the money raised from that IPO is then used by the fund managers to buy whatever the fund is going to hold. They're also traded on stock exchanges, making CEFs much more like ETFs than actual mutual funds. Open-end mutual funds, on the other hand, are a bit different. Technically, there is no limit as to how many shares can exist for an open-end mutual fund. When someone buys more shares, more shares are automatically created. But when someone sells their shares, then those shares are taken out of circulation. With closed-end funds, on the other hand, there's a set amount as to how many shares there are, and buying or selling shares doesn't increase or decrease the number of shares that exist. This can potentially be a good thing, as this means that CEFs can potentially trade above their real value, thus potentially there could be more capital appreciation for the fund. One feature a lot of closed-end funds have is high dividend yields. And one strategy CEFs use to achieve this is by using the freedom these funds have in making very quick changes to what they hold. With your typical ETF or open-end mutual fund, they have to report whenever they add or remove holdings from their fund, which can take some time. But close-end funds can make changes, sometimes daily, and shift their positions to higher yielding holdings. However, this can be a bad thing as well, which I'll address pretty soon. Some CEFs like the BlackRock Corporate High Yield Fund and the KKR Income Opportunities Fund have yields ranging from 7-9% to on average. But the Cornerstone Strategic Fund really is playing in a league of its own at nearly 15%. So let's take a deeper look into that monthly dividend yield and see where it's coming from. CLM's last dividend declare date was on February 5th and was for $0.16 cents per share. They actually announced that a $0.16 cent dividend would be paid in April, May, and June. So they announced dividend payments a couple months in advance, which isn't particularly unusual. But when looking at the past dividend distributions for this fund, we see something that isn't ideal, which is dividend amounts have been steadily on the decline. According to what's on Nasdaq.com, this fund hasn't increased their dividends since 2015. When we look even farther back at its dividend history, we can see that, fortunately, it hasn't been nothing but dividend cuts since this fund was launched, 
but the amount of times that they've cut the dividend for this fund far exceeds the amount of times they've increased it. And another thing that needs to be addressed here is the share price for CLM. Right now it's trading at $13.13 .13 per share, and as you can see, it's fully recovered from the dip it suffered during the COVID pandemic last March, and it has had some nice gains since then. But look at this fund's performance since its inception. This fund was trading at $147 a share back in 2007, but then it just started to tank and it's never fully recovered to that original price. When we look at the performance of CLM in the last two years and the last five years, things do look better for it though. You might remember earlier how I mentioned that closed-end funds have the ability to change their holdings quickly and that this can either be a good thing or this can be a bad thing. Well, this would be an example of it being a bad thing. It's entirely possible that this fund held some thing or some things that caused its share price to fall dramatically in the past. It could have also been management's decision to make some minor changes in how it manages this fund, but I've been analyzing and combing through their SEC filings for a couple hours now, and I just haven't seen anything that stands out or would lead me to believe that that was the case here. Since closed-end funds can make changes to their portfolios as frequently as they want, it can be really difficult to figure out what the fund was holding in the past that led to such steep declines in its share price. However, when looking at what the fund is currently holding, we can see that it's pretty well diversified. It has a lot of technology, healthcare, and communications holdings. According to Seeking Alpha, this fund's top 10 holdings include stocks like Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, among others and that their top 10 holdings account for roughly 40.66% of the entire fund's portfolio. Taking a deeper look into their schedule of investments on their website, approximately 12.19% of this fund holds other closed-end funds inside of it as of September of last year. But again, things have probably changed since then to a certain degree, and I couldn't find a more up-to-date version of their schedule of investments. When combing over some of the holdings in this fund, we can begin to see where it gets such a huge dividend yield. For example, they got some master limited partnerships, some real estate holdings, high income funds, and etc. So all of these things along with the closed end funds help explain where this huge dividend yield comes from. I also want to mention that I looked at a lot of these holdings individually, and a lot of what's inside CLM has been performing pretty mediocre, which also helps explain this fund's decreasing, decreasing share price over the last few years. So when taking all of these things into consideration, to give you my personal opinion, you might assume that I would just say no way, considering the decreasing share price and taking all of the dividend cuts in the last few years into consideration. This isn't something that I would typically recommend anybody to put their money in, but I would say maybe not so fast. And let me explain. My personal belief is this. If you want to hold any amount of CLM in your portfolio, I would absolutely, absolutely recommend that you reinvest those dividends. It's entirely possible that this fund could see another dividend cut in the future, maybe even in the near future. So I don't believe this is a fund that you should rely on for income every single month. But if you reinvest those dividends, it could potentially increase the dividend amount in the future. This is what I'd consider to be a very, very high risk fund which is typical of closed-end funds in general. They're pretty much all riskier than your typical open-end fund. If you do decide to pick up some shares, I'd strongly discourage anyone from buying too much of it. I know we all love high dividend yields here, but the likelihood of future dividend cuts is really high in CLM's case. Just make sure, one, your portfolio is well diversified with more reliable holdings you can depend on more for income if you're already living off dividends, and two, if you do pick up some shares, only pick up a few and make sure you reinvest those dividends. This is a pretty speculative income fund in my opinion. So if you do decide to take the risk, you could potentially, potentially be looking at some serious income in the future. And also if you're interested, the same management company behind CLM, which is Cornerstone Advisors, they do have another fund which is called the Cornerstone Total Return Fund, ticker symbol CRF, which is a little different, but from what I saw, it still has a lot of the same holdings as CLM. Just thought I'd mention that in case you want to check it out for yourself. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below and also subscribe to the channel for more aggressive dividend investing content. 
Be sure to check out some of my other recent videos if you haven't already, like the top 5 highest yielding ETFs that pay monthly dividends, and the highest yielding equity REITs out there. Okay, thanks again guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.